All righty. Let us uh, start today. Do we have any new folks that wanted to say hello? Don't see any new friends. Um, who can help us assist with uh, meeting notes today? Describing. All right, Vicki and Eric. Thank you both. Appreciate that. Uh, does anyone have any opens they want to add to the call before we jump into our exciting topic, uh, staffing and estimates? All right, I will yield the floor to Francis and Emily who put together a pretty cool doc to start lead our conversation. I'll let Francis go first. Ah. In that case, give me a second to set up for us. Uh, sure, you going to send a link to the skeleton doc? I got it, but I wanted to use the opportunity to um, remind everyone that we have an, like uh, a GitHub setup. So you can use it to file issues on things we're working on and put your stuff there so that we increase transparency even further on top of recording everything and putting it on YouTube. So um, this is what we tried. Uh, so Emily and I basically filed an issue against ourselves, a little bit of what we wanted to tackle here. Um, and today, where if you go in the issue, sorry, like just to be explicit, I know uh, Crobe actually put the link on it, but it's on our open SSF, SR, like uh, SIRT issues. So uh, staffing and estimates, essentially, Emily and I thought we should probably have a little skeleton document to get us started on like uh, you know, it's okay to be to disagree with what we have here, but at least we'll have a place to start to understand like the conversation. And we approached it from two main angles, essentially, like, how do we define the personal itself? Like, what kind of personal do we expect to have to need? And on the intake, so requests for the cert of the cert, uh, essentially, how do we get uh, intake? How do we receive from like uh, stuff? We also have a little bit here about the services and offerings and how we want to handle escalations and handoffs. The emergencies and conflicts bit is kind of like, um, I don't want to say like secondary, but it's essentially going to require a lot more thought than dis in discussions. Well, than discussions. So anyway, <clears throat> do we want us to just present what we have in mind and then we go back and yeah, let's it. let's um, review it with the team here and start talking through it. Get the opinions and suggestions. Perfect. Is there any major or anybody that thinks we should have a different structure, a different approach to this, or are we just get started? Five seconds of quiet means it's okay. Excellent. Yeah, uh, or so, five seconds of quiet means people haven't seen the document yet, and so they haven't formed an opinion. So I think walking through it will give people um, the chance to really form that opinion. But I suspect, considering who has written this, it's probably pretty good. Emily did most of the writing. I fully agree. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot of work that still needs to be done in this, but we can certainly start walking through it. Um, one of the things that we had initially talked about at various of the meetings was about what kind of individuals would be participating in the CERT. Um, based off of those discussions, uh, Francis and I are proposing that there's two primary or two types of primary responders who are the individuals that are responsible for actually executing the work of the CERT. There are community volunteers and then there are direct staff. 
Um, the difference between the two of them is um, primarily the direct staff have access to the foundation's resources and can better facilitate the, the needs of the CERT back to the foundation. So they act as a liaison between them. Um, and it gives us a, a better line of access to any kind of legal support or tooling support or other kind of licensing support that would be necessary. But we suspect a lot of the um, incident response activities themselves will probably largely come out of volunteers that determine that they are interested. We didn't provide any timelines or um, time obligations associated with this at this time because we just wanted to get a, a good understanding of the structure. Um, we also have a concept of support staff, and these are contracted personnel who perform ancillary functions to the primary uh, incident response team, those primary responders. They can be any number of things, but at the time of the writing, we didn't have a concrete list of roles and responsibilities for them because we figured that will adjust and change as we continue to flesh out more of their responsibilities and um, execution and processes associated with the CERT. And I think um, as we go through and start to flesh out the plan, those support roles may uh, come into better clarity as we start to actually put some meat on the bones. Yep. Um, next was figuring out the intake process or how folks make requests of the CERT. Um, we talked through what does that intake look like? Um, Francis had a brilliant idea of doing a robot.txt file within repos that al allows us to pull some information together so maintainers or reporters or requesters don't have to keep regurgitating the same content that's already available within a repository. So kind of help automating and lowering the barrier to entry for that process and make it as frictionless as possible. Um, we started with a, a limited set of metadata that's just essential for us to understand more about the project. Obviously, this is incomplete, but it's a good starting point. So what is the project name? What is the requester's relationship to the project? Because it could very well be likely that they are a maintainer. They could be a security researcher that has no relationship to the project. They could be a active community contributor, any number of things. Um, understanding who the maintainers are or where that file is kept so we know who to contact. Um, and the specific contact information beyond just a mailing list, because sometimes mailing lists get set up and forgotten, and it's a lot <laughs> it's a lot better just to reach out to an individual. That doesn't preclude us from also adding that mailing list to an email notification that goes to them. Um, but something worth considering here. Also, where is the project located? That can be any number of things. It could be a GitHub repo, it could be GitLab repo, it could just be um, some file directory that's accessible on the internet, any number of things. We, we, don't, um, we don't have a, a preference necessarily, but also if um, the project could potentially be part of a different foundation, it could be um, an open core project of a, of a commercial company. So there's all, all these kinds of things that we need to understand about where the project exists within the ecosystem. Um, whether or not they have any security governance, so any kind of instructions to let folks know this is where you file a report and this is what their expected process looks like. Whether or not they have a team, you can have one and not the other and that's perfectly acceptable. So kind of understanding a little bit more of like that first assessment of what is the situation with the project and who are the people that I need to talk to regardless of what the incident actually is. Yeah, this is like this, this kind of line of questioning is really to help us determine the maturity of like the project that we're dealing with. And it will help us also like for the second part here about the vulnerability, like essentially what kind of tiers, what kind of engagement are we getting ourselves into of sorts? Quick question. Would you, um, is your proposal to put this metadata into your uh, robot text file so that we could potentially automatically pull that as part of a request? Yeah, yeah. Um, it could be this set of information minimally, it could be less, it could be more. The idea is just like, I imagine whenever you're filing an issue, it's always the same information every time and you'd wish you could just be like, remember me, please remember mm -hmm. all of these fields, very similar. Cool, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Francis, why don't you talk about vulnerability? 
Yes, let me open up the chat room because I think people have commented. Okay, so for vulnerability stuff, like on basically, it, we don't know what it looks like, but we wanted to basically separate the project information from the vulnerability information. And on the vulnerability side, we basically looked into, okay, like what is the impact according to yourself? Like uh, as, an, as a subjective evaluation, uh, like negligible, low, medium, and so on to the project and versus the community itself, because sometimes these will have different scopes, different impacts as well. Is this public or under embargo? Um, how, how was it reported? How was it discovered? Uh, I see Martha here. Oh, okay, sorry. And moving on to how was it reported? Like basically the discovery method here. And uh, under that, please provide a report. We opted for something that most likely will offer like uh, no formatting of sorts, maybe maybe anything later on, but we don't want people to upload files just for simplicity's sake and also uh, remove some infrastructure on our end. Do you, did you receive a proof of concept? Have you confirmed if it is true? Essentially, this is something that we have talked about in the plan as well to help folks confirm or like uh, offer some kind of like SME stuff. Is there a CV already? Do you need one maybe? And do you agree or con and consent to using our responsible disclosure processes? This point here is really to like uh, protect us a little bit, but at the same time, if folks refuse because they have their own processes or they have their own approach or they disagree with the 90 day, whatever pro proposal that we have publicly available, uh, this also clarifies and like simplifies our engagements because we won't be able to move forward with the, like the classic processes that we would be using. And then there's a sort of short conversation about the idea for the robot, the TXT or equivalent file on the, on the side. Marta here has an additional question to ask researchers. When do you want to release information? Essentially, you mean the disclosure here, Marta? Like a publicly disclose. Yeah. yeah, this is yeah. basically in the cases when uh, those are security researchers, they have their paper accepted somewhere and they will be talking about this vulnerability like in 30 days, for example. Yeah, public, like estimated public like disclosure date might actually be really interesting as well. Yes, I'll put that here. Sounds good. So, and the last bit here is that we would like this group to work on defining service level objectives as well as probably tiers. Uh, so this is where, this is the angle that we've adopted here, which is like depending on the maturity of the project that is requesting assistance and the complexity of the vulnerability that we're facing, we should have tiering structures on effort that we expect to have to give and how long and how many people and so on and so forth. Uh, so essentially, yeah, this, this is the bulk of help. How do we estimate effort? Now, if there's no major comments. Yeah. Let, let's pause here for a second, Francis. Um, what does the group think? Uh, what do we, what do we like about this? What do we have questions about? What would we suggest to change? Feel free to uh, unmute or type in the chat or even uh, put his comments or uh, notes in the meeting, doc, meeting agenda. So I think this is a, um, a good start. I suspect we're going to have rather a lot of iteration once we start working on things and seeing what works, what doesn't, what we need, what we don't need. Um, <clears throat> but this is still rather a lot of information. And so making sure we have a method, not only of collecting it, but also tracking and reporting on it. So having it in some sort of standardized form where we can um, uh, ingest it into some sort of tracking mechanism or 
uh, start in some sort of form that can be a tracking mechanism where we can um, slice and dice the data because we will need that for uh, budgets and various things. Um, and just uh, so I think that's something we need to make sure is if it's not represented in our overall plan yet, we should ensure that it is because it's obvious that we're collecting some good data. And um, as Marta pointed out, also making sure that we can uh, keep the data secure because it can be kind of, um, you know, showing who has asked for help is kind of also showing who has had security problems. So how can we keep this data secure in it from uh, people or at least wait until we've got so much data that nobody will care. Regardless, um, that's something we need to make sure we uh, cover. And it looks like Correct. Emily is typing very quickly and is capturing that. So the tooling, the tooling aspect of it is definitely critical. And uh, we've explicitly not discussed it uh, in this document before. Like I know Krobe and I had a like, shorter conversation off band about it, but this is something indeed that we will need the group to actually look into as well. Oh yeah, I don't expect it to be defined here at all, but uh, um, I do need it to be acknowledged, I think, yeah. that okay. that will be a separate process, but we will have something that meets this basic sort of criteria. As part of our final plan, we will need to have a proposal for uh, tooling and people and infrastructure. And um, as Francis alluded to, we had a brief conversation about it, um, this group, um, and we need to decide, you know, is it full time volunteer staff, kind of see what that mix is. This group will need some type of tool to help manage these incidents. Uh, there, there are um, a handful of commercial offerings, and then there's also uh, a tool like Vince. And, you know, if we would like to. If we like Vince and we think that's a good move forward, we potentially could apply uh, people towards improving it and changing it to meet the needs of this group. And that's, I need to have some kind of offline conversations if that's a route we want to take to see if that's um, amenable to that project. What, what does the group, what other thoughts do you have before I uh, ask another question? What does the group think about the idea of advocating for that robot.txt file? Um, devoting some time and energy towards promoting this, getting projects to start to uh, build that out and have that in place so that once this team comes online, that work will be easier. What does the group think about that proposal? 9.20 a.m. That's right, it's, it is 9.20 a.m., Siri. Art had a good question about whether or not it's significantly different than the security.txt file. Um, I think the, the key difference here is that the security.txt files or security.markdown um, is not always, it doesn't always contain the same fields of information. Um, so having a dedicated file with a minimum set of fields in a standardized format certainly makes things a lot easier. However, it doesn't necessarily mean that we can't also look at a security markdown or a security.txt file for those same fields, particularly if, particularly if they are encoded in such a way that allows us to still retrieve the important information. Yeah, something and, else. Yeah, the name itself is just we, we wrote robot.txt or security.txt just as like people know what this means. Uh, but yeah, it either could be its own independent file or a new file or like <laughs> merge into something else as long as structured data is somewhat available. Because as Emily pointed out right now, there's no structure really in these files. It's kind of meant to be very lightweight and free form. So yeah, we want to see what the group thought about it.
but yeah, food for thoughts for now. Like, I don't think we need to like commit to anything or, or you know, elect this as a project for the SIG. But uh, yeah, I would like us to revisit the question at some point, maybe next week or the end of the summer. Yeah, definitely something that as we start to split up into small groups, focusing in on specific parts of the plan and building out those details. Uh, you know, do we think the proposal here for the staffing, uh, do we think that's a, the model we should use and kind of use that lens as we are uh, requesting resources? Do we, do we like that enough to uh, temporarily ratify that to move forward? And then think about things like the robot text as a uh, supplementary as we move along. I'm sorry, Krip, could you repeat that specific so question? We're going to break up into small groups as part of the next phase of this SIG. We're going to divide up the plan into digestible chunks, and we're going to go through and fill out the details. And one of those details is going to be staffing, for example. So do we like the idea that we have um, two main categories, primary responders and support, and then within primary responders, it'll be some mix of community and direct staff. So do we like that as the, uh, the lens with which we will be requesting resources, people resources, um, as we move into the next stage of making the plan better? So we got Vicky thinks that's a good idea. Randall agrees. Cool. Thank you. Any um, any alternative suggestions before we kind of decide that that's the lens we'll use? And we always have the ability to pivot or you know, as we learn new things, uh, augment. All right. So it sounds like. That part is good. What would you like to show us next? Is there anything else within your document you want to talk about today? Yep. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about the significant critical concern. Um, so we talked a lot about in intake and that there is an individual that is requesting the services of the CERT. Um, one factor that's worth considering is the concept of uh, self-promotion or barging in on a project that we need to be very sensitive about because there may be occasions within the community where a high impact vulnerability is reported and it for all intents and purposes it doesn't appear that the project is managing it well or managing it at all or isn't even aware about it so this significant critical concern area um, we had started roughing out as a way for us to capture those occasions where we may have access to some information um, and need to engage with a project or would like to engage with a project. How do we go about doing that in a delicate manner? Because there are a number of factors that have to be considered um, in that kind of engagement. Yeah, there will be <clears throat> there will be a lot of human subtleties that come into play, especially if you know, like we don't have to imagine too far to imagine scenarios where not every developer agrees to escalate to us or not every owner wants us to be involved. Uh, how do we handle that? Like these conversations should be held before we even start these engagements internally to us. Right? So, yeah. So, so do you envision this as some type of a playbook for the team? Yeah. To get started for sure. Yeah. Um, so next is the services and offerings, and this was our initial pass based off of the existing um, discussions within this group around the various kinds of, <laughs> there will be a lot of human subtleties should be our model, yes. Um, there are various types of engagement that we could potentially participate in. So Francis and I talked through a few of them. Some of them are new in concept to this group. So we wanted to kind of go through it a little bit more in depth. So the first one is around um, just a coordination to help them uh, manage the vulnerability, to overcome it very quickly and have a positive outcome. So that's just a top level kind of engagement, very simple. 
Um, we've also talked about reviewing the overall project as part of that level of engagement, but this is a little bit simpler in that it's um, a introductory review, what is the project, what is the current posture, do you have the processes in place, kind of like a an initial evaluation of what is their security health and their security posture. A much deeper dive for that is a security design review, which is more in-depth involvement with the project. It's a higher ask of them, but the value that they get out of that potential review is much um, stronger. So the idea being, rather than just responding to the incidents all of the time and going through the same motions of the process of coordination and responsible disclosure and assisting them in that, it would also be beneficial for doing anything that we can to assist them in removing the likelihood of vulnerabilities by reducing the attack surface, ensuring that they're calling the libraries correctly, all of those kinds of things. So that, that those two, the reviews and the security design review were the two primary areas of introduction that we wanted to really highlight here. And what does that mean? Um, we've also talked in the past about patching, whether or not their group has the technical skill set to be able to perform that. And we did write that into the plan, as well as the mitigation portion, because not everything is necessarily going to be fixed with a patch. We may have to provide or assist in providing recommendations about how do you work around the vulnerability? Is it a configuration file? Is it putting a load balancer in front of it? All of these kinds of things that can just better assist with the more immediate response while a patch is still being developed. And then communications and advisories, just assisting them in writing it, making sure that they have the right content for their users or for anybody that is consuming vulnerability advisory information for them. So I wanna take a pause there about the types of engagements and kind of like check in with folks. What do they think about that list? What's missing? Um, we probably should have some type of uh, education outreach, and that might link into the education SIG, but we should make it part of our mission to provide materials and training and assistance to help teach people that aren't in crisis mode yet. Agreed. I, I was typing it in there. Thanks. I think we all had the same idea at the same time because I added a comment along those lines as well. We all share a brain now, I guess. It's time to start a new working group. <laughs> so yeah, these services and offerings, right? They, um, they're, sorry, let me turn on video. They're meant to be somewhat of a menu for users to choose from, in a, in a sense. And also like for us as kind of like, uh, here's our own internal you know, roadmap of what we need to actually define and make sure that it's like very clear and well done or like on our end as well. So like if we do have too complex of a menu, maybe it's not a good thing for us either. So we have just about like seven items here is that too much? Is that too few? Do we want folks to be able to like have a full tableau d'hote setup, or you know, do we want to have like a very short? We'll only do these three things. Like it's fine as well to reduce scope. What does the group feel like? Well, and, and we also have the ability to state this will be a year one deliverable, a year two or beyond, so we can kind of phase things in. Uh, I think. We'll definitely need to flag, think about how we want to present this externally. Um, do we envision this to be a dedicated kind of a website? Do we want to work just off of Git? Uh, do we want to use whatever the tool is, kind of modify a front end there? And I think we'll probably need some UX, U, UI people to help us uh, present this in its, a simple format. Yeah, that's definitely, that's definitely around the implementation like uh, of it and we would probably delegate that to whatever sub working group is actually like focused on that but yeah is the team happy with the services 
Any other ideas we can think of that we missed? I think this is a good start. And um, once we start using it, I'm sure that will turn up all sorts of things to change. But heck of a start, yay team. Indeed. Thank you, Vicki. Hey, quick, uh, quick comment. I put this in the Google Doc. Um, Great, great idea to right, integrate improvement along with just responding to fighting the fire over and over again. So no, no argument there whatsoever. Um, and I think there are at least parts of that that I wouldn't hesitate to put in right from year one, right from the beginning. Um, I did put a comment in though to take some care. Uh, you know, there could be situations where there's not time or resources to do everything and do a full review or, or do to do an improvement, even when there's clearly one being requested or called for. Um, so we might want to have some language that just says, look, if it's if nothing else is available, we're responding to the vulnerability. We're going to fix that. We're going to put out the fire. We strongly want to do more things, but if it comes down to it, right, firefighting is the, the primary goal. Now, if that's not true, or we don't agree with that, that's perfectly fine, but um, mostly a sort of a scoping thing. So we don't we don't put ourselves in a situation of doing right full security support for everything we get kind of every time especially in the thought, first I year sense. i agree yeah. that we're not gonna be able to do everything on the first year and maybe not even uh, the second year i guess we'll see what does the group think about that yes very true and one of the things i don't know which section with which section it's in but we we did write down explicitly to define when we're done, like as part of any engagement. Uh, like, and depending on our current resources, again, like this is gonna be probably a mix of volunteer paid staff. We will be constrained, assuming we're very popular. So we will have to be very explicit about, okay, we only have so much time, right? Yeah, that's um, apparently, I learned that this is a very old way of doing the heart because we're all old now. Anyhow. <laughs> So yes, Art, I agree. I agree on like, a, yes, this approach. And I, I captured that down below underneath of the service tiers, Art, so that we have that as a call out that needs explicit work. Um, so next, and we had mentioned it previously further up about the group needing to define SLOs and service tiers associated with some of that work. Um, we kind of broke it down into two areas. One of them is more for the internal group processes and the other one is more for the requester because we realize that there's some level of education that we're going to need to provide to those requesters. So for the first one about internal assessment and triaging the severity, um, trying to understand uh, what things we do need to consider. So we started with an initial list of factors, but I believe that there's going to be a lot more from this group of other things that need to be considered and kind of like both triaging, but also with that prioritization component. And then for the requester, one, one go small ahead, note here, I guess, sorry. One small note here, this list will need to be made public as in like what criteria we use, but the evaluation of said criteria will definitely be internal to us at this point. Yeah. We may, may, you know, maybe we decide to be transparent about it, but uh, this is definitely for an internal assessment of the situation. Yep. And then for the requester, trying to get a better um, identification about how big is their project and how bad is the issue. What could be really bad for some teams and organizations could actually not be as significant to others. So trying to understand a little bit more about what is the size of the community that they have for the country for the contributors, but also whether or not they know who their adopters are, because in some cases projects don't, and that's okay, but in other occasions they do, and they may have a very large adoption rate um, from various companies and various industry verticals that can help in us understand a little bit more about the impact. Also the maturity of the project. Is it just a few days old? Has it been around for a really long time and they've been doing this forever? This is just their first security vulnerability. So kind of understand like what they could potentially potentially be exposed to or um, how robust their code base is and whether or not they have the history with um, vulnerability disclosures. Are they familiar with the process? Have they had a bad experience in the past? What does that actually look like? So 
So how do folks feel like with these two tiers to get, to get us started? So I see a lot of typing still happening in there. Uh, like the full list, please feel free to expand and like uh, modify and update as you see fit. Uh, just try to leave these things as either suggestions or uh, like, especially if you're deleting them, make it explicit that it was removed. But yeah, feel free to just go about and change that list. But really the questions about these two tiers, like uh, do we need another one? Is there something we haven't thought about? I think this is a pretty good, an excellent start. What do, aside from the folks typing, does anyone have any uh, impressions or additional thoughts? Excellent. Escalations. Emily, do you want to close out with escalations as well? Because this sure. was closer to your heart. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we had talked at the day two of the May meeting about this concept of the third of last resort. And I, I believe I had mentioned it here previously about escalations and handoffs between various CERT teams or even just security teams of a given project. Um, what does that look like? There's obviously a lot of coordination for reach out and engagement with existing foundations and entities to determine whether or not they have an appetite to set up their own CERT for those projects. However, there are some things that we do need to understand. How many other groups are involved? What are they currently working on? What are our thresh thresholds for disengaging? Because at some point, we're not going to be doing all of the work of the project. They, they should be stepping up and taking a lot of ownership of their own processes, and we want to empower them to do so. So there is some kind of requirement for us to evaluate whether or not they, we believe that they are set up for, set up for success with the kind of engagement that we've already had. Um, another factor to consider is when and if we should be contacting authorities, given what could have transpired. Um, Unfortunately, the vulnerability space and just general incident response is um, unfortunately laden with a lot of potential problem areas that need to be avoided. And we want to ensure that we have a defined process for when they show up rather than figuring it out for um, when they do on the fly. And then kind of what are those handbacks and should we check back in with the project after we choose to disengage? Is it a phased disengagement where we just periodically check in with them and say, hey, have you run this? We didn't see it. Um, or is it more of a passive, just checking in on them in the background and not really actually engaging more personally with them? Yeah, Krobe's comment on this, I think, is very relevant as well. Like uh, some communities will have very specific processes around how to communicate even with them or like uh, using their, you know, their protocols and mailing lists, as we've all been witnessing uh, very concretely. So, yeah, and, and I envision, at least initially, probably a lot of the folks we might work with will be small projects, but we may desire to share with like a distros list and there are very concrete rules about how and when to do that so we'll make sure we're, we're obeying those and complying with them and then you know it, potentially if it's like an issue that is like a kubernetes issue we would potentially just simply turn over to the security team over there at kubes and offer assistance uh, as they might request it.
right. what other things might we need to think about for escalations or handoff? It will come up, I'm sure. <laughs> and same for emergencies, right? Like um, we have not defined like the rest of the, the rest of the document was not defined, not because we didn't have words for them, but uh, we ran out of time and we wanted to still leave some room for uh, for an open discussion here in this group as well. So how, how do we handle emergencies as a cert, as in like uh, zero days and things like this? Yeah, like, do we want to- no breaks, not, yeah. Correct. You know, like uh, these little scenarios that tend to be very fun to write down, but still happen. Uh, so, yeah, food for thoughts here. If folks have ideas, feel free to just populate this live, or we can. Oh, sorry, the screen locked. And uh, yeah, or we can wait for this for like the smaller group to actually just start uh, fleshing that out by themselves. Second big thing we want well, it's kind of a big thing but we glossed over it earlier which is how do we handle conflicts uh, and that's meant mostly mostly for community community level or like a project level conflicts internal conflicts or not uh, this is what the people section would be and on the legal on the legal side we definitely need to um, start making a lot of really good friends around the legal team that we have here at OpenSSF. Uh, because they will hear about us and we should hear about from them. So uh, this is for the area here and on processes, pre-release embargoes, all that. We should be explicit about what it is that they mean for us as a cert so that folks are not getting any surprises uh, along the way of coordinating. Yep. So, yeah. I really appreciate the two of you putting the extra effort in to help us uh, kind of shape the conversation here. Does anyone have any more thoughts about what they've shared with us? Or do you want some more time to uh, think through and maybe explicitly address uh, feedback next time? How would we like to proceed with this? Well, I see two, two big approach here. First is, is there any major gap we forgot? Like if the room here is like, oh, why didn't we talk about X? Now is a really good time to mention it. And the second question I think we should answer as a group is who wants to work on this further? Because this is definitely just a skeleton. There's a number of like fan out documents and maybe even websites that need to be looked into uh, to be created and so on. So now might also be a really good time in the last 15 minutes. So I see one volunteer already. You're the only volunteer right now, Eric. So this makes you the full owner. And uh, <laughs> oh, okay, Randall. There you go. Thank you, Randall, for helping out. Yeah. But um, yeah, otherwise, if if you folks are com comfortable, uh, what is the first? Like, what are the big gaps here? So I might suggest that um, we'll be able to move more quickly if we take this particular artifact and anyone that's interested in collaborating on this right now, um, we schedule a special session where we get together either virtually or on a call to focus on this particular document. And that's the technique I'm gonna use as we look at the whole plan. We're gonna see if we can, does it break into logical parts and can we uh, move those parts to smaller groups to uh, get some velocity behind us as we uh, focus in on the smaller chunks. So yes, Emily, uh, thank you for pointing it out. We do have a GitHub issue. Feel free to just mm -hmm. chime in. If you do want to throw your, uh, what's the expression again? Throw your hat in the ring. In, uh, yeah, hat in the ring, there you go. So feel free to use that as well. Um, yeah, otherwise, if, if, uh, if there's no major gap that we can identify right here, uh, I think we're off to a, a start. I think so. So uh, moving forward, what um, Francis and I are gonna be doing is we're gonna be taking all of our notes in regards to the plan, not this doc, this document will continue to work in parallel, 
but he and I are going to take the plan and uh, get that into um, GitHub as a file that we can start to issue um, comments and PRs on. Uh, the, our next step is going to be uh, trying to chop it up into logical groups. This, this plan is a little tougher than my other one. With the education plan, we have three groups already. So that's pretty simple to split that off into three separate little teams. Um, this one's gonna be a little tougher. So if anyone has any feedback on how we might uh, logically organize ourselves to focus in on specific parts of this, but um, he and I are gonna move it to Git and that way we can start having um, a more transparent conversation there and uh, start to focus in on the things that'll move us towards that final uh, business proposal up to the governing board. Any questions or feedback? So I did wanna um, like put it out there that there may be um, something that's worth considering as we write this up is I can foresee there being an occasion where funding or budget is not available to hire some of these staff members or some of the support or for the tooling. So as we're going through and writing this document, while we may be inclined to write it to our ideal state, we should consider what's going to be realistically achievable with a skeleton crew to be able to manage a lot of this. And maybe in the course of that proposal document, making allocations for that. So ideal state and like minimum viable, what we can actually do with like a couple of volunteers. I totally agree that we should uh, be considering failure state, so to speak, in, in these plans. Um, but we also have to be careful because um, a lot of folks will look at it and go, oh, well, if you could do that with MVP, then do you really need more? Uh, so we, we do need to be clear as we are creating the plan of what the actual goal is and that the MVP is just scraping by and won't help us necessarily meet our goal, but may help us keep things from getting worse, for instance. Um, and so we, we will need to be very clear and document as we do that. Yeah, we'll have to think about what's required, what we have to have. And then um, I don't know that we're proposing anything that's really fluff, but there are things we should be willing to negotiate or potentially push down to year two or three. You know, it, it, ultimately, this is going to come down to a group of people that are interested in putting money uh, up to help support this. Yeah, I do think that framing it uh, more as as the evolution, right? Here's what we need, here's the seed we need to plant. And here's how we expect that plant to grow. If you want it to grow more quickly, we'll need more fertilizer, be that bullshit or money, we prefer money um, and to make that go, right? And so, um, you know, really framing it in that way, I think will help to dodge that uh, kind of MVP question that I mentioned earlier. Oh, as far as a document, um, I don't believe I've looked at it today, but last time I did, there were still all sorts of edits and comments and stuff. And I was going to wait to make another pass on it until you and Francis had a chance to go through it. Uh, and that would really inform the, you know, different groups question. Yeah. Uh, Cause right now things are, as we all know, just a little uh, in flux, shall we say. Yes, that's a good way to describe it. And yeah, my I am going to, I'll see if we have time, but I will make the initial commitment that next week we will have the uh, comments adjudicated and have the stub of the plan put together. It took me about an hour to do the education one. So I don't anticipate it will take a lot. And I did that alone and I didn't have an expert like Francis helping me out. Uh, so I, hopefully we just a couple hours of work, we can uh, get this assembled into a final draft so that we can all have comments and start to think about logically how we want to organize it and who, what areas we'd like to volunteer to uh, focus a little more time on. That's what Saturdays are for. <laughs> you know, I mean, at this point, just like to uh, like reiterate one last time, I guess uh, we will like Rob and I will definitely look at this again. 
uh, this is the first pass at the final version. But as, as Vicky pointed out, we do have a ton of open comments still. And that's fine of sorts right now, but we will need to definitely figure these out, figure these out uh, together at some point. What we commit to doing, Rob, uh, Krob and I is, yeah, we'll try to shorten this, make this broad, like broad categories so that we can define either owners or uh, see how we want to go and move forward with this. So, um, and then my there are, go ahead, Becky. Uh, if there are comments, I mean, if you need help transferring comments to, for instance, issues for this document, so we can at least document this is something we acknowledge that we need to work on in the future. Uh, you know, ping me, let me know, and I will see what I can do to try and at least do that administrivia to lend a hand in that way so we can track what we need to do. Yep, and to echo Emily again, uh, feel free to create issues. And we, one thing that we wanted to avoid of sorts is, you know, Francis creates all issues. So go ahead and create them on your own. Even if they're not perfectly worded, it's fine. We can re-edit those surprisingly. GitHub actually is nice for that. So um, yeah, do go ahead and file issues if you think it's relevant stuff that we need to work on in the future as well. Who knows, and we may even have to uh, prioritize these issues as part of our meeting now. Oh my. Um, and as we have the, the next draft of the final plan put together, and we start to divide this up into uh, more logical, smaller working groups. I'm going to look to the team here to uh, volunteer to take take leadership of certain sections to help us more parallelize the parallelize the work. Not that we want to exclude anyone to participate, but I would like to break this up into smaller pieces so that we can have more focused conversations and ideally move a little more quickly. Everyone will be welcome to participate wherever they would like but I would love it to have um, some folks kind of help lead uh, conversations around some of these areas and try to help facilitate getting those sections done. Vicki. Um, and just a quick reminder to everyone, you know, you've got colleagues, you've got friends, they might be concerned about these sorts of things as well. This is a really great way for them to get started without necessarily having a ton of knowledge about how to operate a cert um, and how they can learn this sort of stuff. So, you know, invite them, bring them along. Everyone is welcome. That's the best. Thank you, Vicki. Any other uh, questions, comment, or feedback? We'll, we'll close a little early today, if not. All right. Thank you, everybody. I really appreciate your feedback. I think we're in a really great spot. I'm happy with how we're progressing. Uh, thanks to Francis and Emily for that excellent conversation framing tool. And uh, looking forward to working with y'all. We'll talk soon. Cheers. Have a good day.